Hi and welcome to the Adam Shop channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam with another screencast. And in this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can use your iOS application to communicate with a .NET XML service, which is a uh, communicating in the SOAP method or SOAP protocols. Now, um, one disclaimer, or I would say uh, a spoiler is that after looking at the code that I will actually show you, you might not use this particular approach because there are some other um, much better methods of communicating with a XML service or a .NET uh, a service which with a SOAP protocol. Um, I would actually, if you're using a .NET application, I would uh, highly recommend you to uh, check out uh, the uh, API for the new controllers that they have developed, okay? and uh, which is the uh, HTTP controllers or something, it's called that, uh, HTTP service controllers, and it's, uh, it makes it very easy to communicate between different platforms. Um, so let's actually first go ahead and check out our service. So I'm just going to uh, run, let me actually show you uh, the service that we have. So here we go. Uh, this is the service, it's hosted on high on coding, it's called customers dot asmx and uh, the get all is a method basically returns all the customers and if you see uh, it will uh, this is a dotnet application or a dotnet web service so you can see that it tells you that what uh, what are the different things required like what will be the request http headers and what is the body that uh, you need to expect Okay, so these kind of things, and you need to keep the, uh, keep these kind of things in mind when when sending or communicating from your iOS application to the .NET service. So we will be using this particular approach, or uh, these particular uh, things in mind when we are implementing our uh, service. Okay, so let's get started. So the so I'll be copy pasting a little bit of code, but I'll explain you everything because there's a lot of code that you actually need to get this working, okay? So the first thing is a URL. Uh, what is the URL of the service? And uh, you will just gonna say URL with string. And uh, if you remember the URL, actually let me paste the URL. So the URL is like this, okay? All right, so now the next part, and uh, let me see if I can resize it so we can just check it out all the time. So then the next part of the service is this body. So we need to send this body in order for service to respond, in order for the service to actually work. Um, so let's actually create this body and there are different methods of creating this body. I'm just going to use a very simple string to hold the body and that's what I'm saying that most probably you will not be doing all of that. Okay, you will not be sending a body like that. So this is basically the uh, SOAP body that we'll be sending because it is kind of required with our service. Now, if you have different kind of services, if you have WCF services, then it might be much easier. You don't have to send all these uh, SOAP requirements or SOAP protocols or SOAP envelopes across all the time. Um, and if you are using the HTTP API for the uh, ASP.NET uh, MVC, uh, four framework then or the MVC three then you can also you know the web API, web API I think that's called so if you're using the web APIs of ASP.NET MVC then it's it becomes much more easier okay now uh, we are going to create a request so this will be NS mutable uh, URL request and uh, you know it will basically be a request will be created using a URL that we already have. All right, um, now we need to set up different things, okay? So all the things that are required and uh, we, we need a SOAP action, we need the content type and then let me paste this and then I'll show you that uh, all these things are actually required by the web service in order for it to work, in order for it to communicate, okay? So what I'm going to do is pull up this, and now here we go. So it has to be post. If you're posting, you can do like this. Uh, host, you don't have to provide this. It will automatically be host. 
uh, to high encoding. Content type, you can see that it is text, XML, and then uh, character selected UTF-8. Uh, we have already provided over here, you can see, right? Other important thing is the SOAP action. Um, SOAP action is actually over here. We are providing SOAP action. Uh, we are providing post. One of the things that you are, we, are, we are not providing is the content length. And you can easily provide this content length uh, by, by getting the content length of the SOAP body. So that will be your content length, okay? But you can provide that. Uh, I think it will send out to be zero of the content length, which is wrong, but it will still work. So now um, we have created our request and we need to send our request. So there are many different ways. I mean, you can use NS URL connection and uh, the built-in functionalities, but I, I always prefer the uh, AF networking class because it allows you to uh, easily, you know, to basically in a few lines of code using the block API, easily use, uh, oops, let me report that. Uh, easily use the easy send out the request. So I'm just going to say uh, HTTP request operation in this case operation and then AF HTTP request operation and then in it with request and we are going to pass in the request which is this. All right. Uh, next thing is uh, operation. And then we can say set completion block. So when the operation actually uh, complete, so we can over here, we can provide different kind of things. Uh, we can provide the success. So whenever success happens, whenever, uh, you know, whenever you are uh, uh, communicating with the web service and it returns a 200 response or it returns a response as a success, then you are going to run this code or else if it's failed, you can uh, just going to run this part of code using the block syntax, so it makes it very easy to do so. So we are more interested in the success part, okay? And um, let me actually also start the uh, service or make the request. You make the request using operation start, okay? And there are different tools that you can use. I'm using eaves, eavesdrop, uh, eavesdrop, and then it will tell you that what kind of request you are sending and what kind of response you are getting back. Okay. Um, for this one, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to run it and we're going to see the response over here. So we get the response success. So we are on a good track. And so we have communicated with this web service and the response that it, we received is, uh, you know, it's a good response. But so now, um, the uh, so what exactly we are receiving? All right. So we can say ns log, and uh, I can simply print it out. Operation, and then you have the response data or response string. So let's put out our print out the response string so you will you will know that what you are actually getting back. So this is a, this is actually correct. So you are getting back customer first name Muhammad and you can say the last name is Azam and there are two customers actually. The other customer is actually John and uh, the last name is Doe. So you're getting two customers and you're getting it in the format of XML. Now, uh, there are different ways you can, you get the XML, you can just read the XML into, uh, you know, if using different methods, and then you can uh, simply uh, return a mutable array or you can create objects and then you can return it. And um, so that particular exercise, I will actually read it, I mean, I will leave it for, for you, for for the uh, the viewers of this, so you at this point you know that you got you got a response back from uh, the the web service and it returns you two objects or basically uh, 
you know, yeah, two different objects, two XML representation of the customer object with first name and last name. And now when you have the response string, now it's your responsibility to use uh, basically XML parsing to get those customers out and put it into uh, a customer object or any sort of a dictionary and then return it back to the client. I will cover that in the next video that how you can do that. Uh, it's not that trivial, but uh, you know, you can ease, you can easily actually basically uh, learn it. I'm, I will be using touch XML to basically iterate through those things. Um, there are a couple of hidden things that we need to learn. Uh, and let's see that if you can figure out uh, uh, those things. Uh, one of the things is about namespace, but I'll cover that in the later tutorial. So right now, just kind of uh, gather your thoughts on how this re request or the soap body actually works. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Hope you like this video tutorial. Thank you very much. And thanks for watching.